Good day grade 11 so welcome to this final lesson in week 36 of your year in this exam in this lesson we're going to be preparing for your final exam and we're going to do paper 2 type questions okay, so we're going to start off with multiple choice questions now remember grade 11 this isn't multiple guess you're supposed to actually make an intelligent decision as to what you think the answer is so it says the substance that donates electrons during a chemical reaction is A or an, and you've got arrhenius acid and base and the reducing agent and oxidizing agent. So what they're really testing is if you know that the transfer of electrons, whether it's an acid-base reaction or a redox reaction, and you need to realize that acids and bases are the transfer of transfer of protons, protons in the form of hydrogen plus ions, okay? So therefore not acid and base. Now we need to look at these two. And obviously we're talking about redox and there's a little anagram that we use which is oil rig, oil rig, which says oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Okay, so oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. But what you need to understand is this, they're asking about the agent. So actually this question is a little bit tricky because the oxidation half reaction is the reducing agent. Okay, and the reduction half reaction is the oxidizing, oxidizing agent and what they're saying is the substance that donates electrons. So donates electrons means we're losing electrons therefore we're being oxidized and we are the reducing agent. So the correct answer is C. There you go. Let's move on. Which one of the following species contains a dative covalent bond? Okay now what is special about a dative covalent bond? A dative covalent bond is a very temporary bond, okay, where basically an atom shares or loans an electron from another atom or molecule. So we're an atom, where an atom shares or loans an electron from another atom or electron, I mean atom or molecule. Okay, so if we have a look at this, let's have a look at ammonia. Ammonia is nitrogen, so it's nitrogen's in group 5, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's got three hydrogens, so it's 1, 2, 3. Perfect, we've got three pairs of shared electrons and one unpaired shared, uh, one pair of unshared electrons, so that's perfect, so it's not a dative covalent bond. Methane is CH4, so that's carbon, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which then becomes 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can see that there are four pairs of shared electrons, so that's cool as well. Let's look at this. This is the hydronium ion. So water normally looks like this. It's got oxygen, okay, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then usually there's a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. But what do you notice? You notice that there is an extra hydrogen here with a positive ion. So there's a hydrogen ion either here or here that is using the electrons of the oxygen. So therefore, the hydronium ion has a dative covalent bond in it. So the correct answer again is C. It says which one of the following compounds has dipole dipole forces between their molecules? Okay, so let us look at this. First of all, we can say that chlorine is not it because chlorine is a perfect diatomic molecule, so therefore it's not chlorine. Okay, dipole, dipole means that we've got a positive and a negative side. Okay, if you look at carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide looks like this. There's carbon, okay, and then it has got a double bonded oxygen and double bonded 
oxygen. So what you need to realize is that if I come along here, what am I going to see? We, I'm going to see something slightly negative, and if I come along here, if I was this small and I looked at oxygen, what would I see? I would see something slightly negative. So can I have two poles there? No, I can't, because if I look this way, I see negative, and if I look that way, I see negative. So it's not carbon dioxide. Let's look at carbon tetrachloride. Carbon in this case is carbon, and it's one, and then it's two, three, and then sticking out at the back there is four. And this time we've got Cl, 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 and Cl. Okay, you need to think of this as like a tripod with a sticky yappy bit. Okay, that's what it looks like. Two to the front, one to the back, and one straight up. Okay, so now. We want to know if this is going to look like if it's going to have dipole double forces. And the only way it can have dipole double forces is if one side or one point of this is slightly positive, whereas another side is slightly negative. So over here we've got something that's slightly negative, something slightly negative, again delta negative, and again delta negative. So it doesn't matter whether I approach this molecule any way I want to, it's, I'm still going to see these chlorine molecule, chloride molecules, okay, or atoms. So that's the problem. So finally we've got HCl, and if we realize that HCl is just H dot, and then it's cross Cl, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's my seven. But more importantly, do you agree that if I came along this way, I would see this part of the molecule has been slightly positive. Whereas if I came along this way, I would see the molecule being slightly negative, which means it is a dipole, which means that if another hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride comes along and arranges as well there, we will have dipole-dipole forces. So the correct answer is B. Now it says, consider the following chemical reaction. We've got HCO3 minus plus HC2O4 minus is in dynamic equilibrium with H2CO3 plus C2O4 2 minus. It says, which one of the following correctly identifies the order of the Lowry Bronsted acid and base in the following? Okay, so Lowry acid and Bronsted. Lowry Bronsted acids are proton donors. They are proton donors. They give away hydrogens, whereas bases are proton acceptors. They accept the hydrogens. So if they said this was a base, that would be HCO3 minus O2, but then it would have to be accepting a hydrogen to become this, okay, possibly, but this is given away as hydrogen as well. So do we agree that this is a base and it accepts that hydrogen, so that's an acid? Therefore, this would have to be an acid and this would have to be a base. So it's base, acid, acid, base, and amazingly that is correct. Correct answer is A, so that is very good. Which one of the following represents the greatest mass? One chlorine atom, one chlorine molecule, one mole of chlorine, and one or one gram of chlorine. Okay, so if we go look on the periodic table, you will see that the molar mass of chlorine is 35.45, but that is just the chlorine atom, okay, 35.45. So now, let me just check that I'm right, yes, I'm right. So chlorine atom has a molar mass of 35.45. Okay, grams per mole. Okay, now it says, so we agree that this is 35,45, right? That is the molar mass. Now it's, so that is 35,45 as well. Now it says one chlorine molecule, well that would be two of these, so that is going to be, um, naught, carry one, it's nine, five times two is 10, carry one, that's 70. And one gram of chlorine is obviously just one gram. So which one of the following represents the greatest mass would be the chlorine molecule, the chlorine molecule. Right, moving on. It says consider the Lewis structure of the compound. We've got X dot, so there is a shared pair of electrons. 
and there's a shared pair of electrons, okay? So do you agree that Y has got seven out electrons and X has only got one, two, three, four, five, six? So it's basically seven, six, seven. Okay, now it says which one of the following is correct? Okay, so which of these has got seven valence electrons? I agree with chlorine and chlorine. Then yeah, which one has got six valence electrons? Well, six valence electrons is going to give me oxygen and sulfur, okay? And then finally they said, is this going to be angular or linear? Because those are my options. So if we look at this, do you see there's a shared pair of electrons here and a shared over here, which means this is actually linear. So the correct answer is C. How do I know that? Because if these shared pair electrons had been done there, then it would have given me this type of shape, and then I would say it's angular. But in this case, it is linear. It says, consider the reaction represented in the equation with 2Fe plus 3CO2 goes to Fe2 as 3 plus 2 zero, and the delta H is 53,2 kilojoules. Now it says which one of the following statements is true for each mole of Fe that reacts this much energy, 26.6 kilojoules of energy is released, or it's absorbed, or 53.2 and 53.2. Right, so delta H is endothermic, which means what? It means we take in energy. So energy is absorbed. We also know this 53.2 is for two iron, two Fe moles, okay? So do you agree that for one of, okay, Fe mole we've got 26.7? So therefore we can say that, well, the energy is absorbed and it is 26.6 kilojoules of energy is being absorbed. It says, which of the following graphs does not, oh God, does not, does the dotted line correctly represent the deviation of the real gas from an ideal gas? Okay, so what do we know? We've got real gases versus ideal gases, okay? And when does this not happen? When does an ideal gas not look like, I mean, when does a real gas not look like an ideal gas? It would be at high pressures, it would be at low temperatures, okay, at high pressures and low temperatures, it doesn't look like an ideal gas, so now we don't have pressure, we took a pressure and volume, we'll worry about that in a minute, so we're saying at high pressure, um, the, at high pressure, what's going to happen, the gases, um, Hang on, let me just think about this. We've got pressure versus volume. So the lower the volume. So at high pressure, the volume is going to be small. Okay. So therefore the volume decreases, um, the pressure increases. Okay, so now this would be a real gas, in which case the pressure would be less than what we expected. Nope, not that one. Yeah, the pressure is saying that the pressure does not go down to zero. Okay, that works. Pressure is going to be higher. Nope, it's going to be B. B is saying, this is saying that as the volume decreases, the pressure is going to get higher, and that is true.